Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for being here with us today. Today, I convened the Hendry County Grand Jury, and I'm here today with our Sheriff of Hendry County, Steve Whitten, and his team and my team to announce a grand jury indictment against Ian Bonnock for first degree murder, abuse of a dead human body, and tampering with evidence. The defendant is accused of murdering his estranged wife, Katie Samantha Bonnock, a young mother, between September 29th and September 30th, 2022. Bonnock is currently incarcerated in the Hendry County Jail and will now have this charge of first degree murder and the other two charges added. I hope that today's indictment starts to bring some sense of justice to the family and the friends of the victim as they grieve their loss. And of course, our thoughts are with them and also with her children today. You guys want to hear the what they say about the probable cause on is this Bano or Banock Banock? Ba like a sheep followed by knock Banock. Okay, so this is the Florida bodybuilder. This was last October of 2022. Has he gone to trial yet? I bet this one is going to come into trial soon. So let's go over this real quick. Okay. Florida bodybuilder charged after ex-wife's remains were found in a burn pile. Katie Banock was last seen. On September 29th, when she told her friend she was going to her ex-husband's home to pick up some belongings. I'm going to screen share this with you guys. Okay, Henry County, Florida. This is him right here. He's a good looking man. Ian Banock, 43, of Fort Donald, is charged with first degree premeditated murder, murder in the death of 39-year-old Katie Banock. He's a former bodybuilder and former Marine. Authorities say they found his ex-wife's remains in a fresh burn pile and barrel in his backyard. He's charged with first-degree premeditated homicide in the death of his 39-year-old wife. He was also charged with 13 counts of possession of a controlled substance without a prescription after police found steroids in his home. Steroids! Steroids, kids! From a bodybuilder! Imagine that! including the fragments of a human mandible with an intact tooth in a fresh burn pile and an additional human bone fragment in a 50-gallon barrel near the pile, according to an NBC News report cited the criminal complaint, citing the criminal complaint. The remains were later identified as Katie Bnock. Katie was reportedly missing by a friend on the morning of September 30th of 2022. Um, according to the police, the friend told authorities that she had left her two children in her care to go to her former husband's home to retrieve some personal belongings. Friends and family had not heard from her and were unable to reach her on her cell phone. And after authorities were unable to contact either of them, police obtained a warrant to search Ian Bannock's home. During the first search, police found a large number of steroids within the home. He was arrested and charged after admitting the drugs belonged to him. Authorities found Katie's remains on October the 1st, 2022, during a second search of the home. Police also found evidence of blood in his car and inside his home after applying a chemical that glows when it reacts to blood. Authorities also found signs of physical struggle in a hallway, noting wall damage and a broken wall-mounted mirror. Authorities treated Ian Bannock's car in the garage by applying luminol, a chemical that reacts to blood by gl glowing blood, and found the interior of the truck glowed blue after treatment. Authorities also found several weapons in the attic above his garage, including an AR-15 rifle, upper receiver, a 13 silencers of various configurations, two Glock pistols, three rifles, and a shotgun. According to NBC News, Katie Blanc, According to NBC News, Katie Bannock had filed an injunction for domestic violence against him before her death. She reportedly told police that Ian had abused one of her children and filed the injunction on the child's behalf. Oh, these poor children. Um, Carolyn McKinney, her mother, told WHAS in Louisville, Kentucky, that her daughter met 
Ian on Christian Mingle. He convinced her to leave her hometown of New Albany, Indiana to live with him in Florida. Guys, just because it has Christian in the front of it doesn't mean it's a Christian website. Okay, y'all know this. My good friends who love crew trom, no, crew trom, crew trom. Y'all love crew trom. Y'all know y'all love crew trom. Now, my my good friends out there that love true crime, y'all know this is y'all know this is the truth. Now, I'm a Christian woman, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I wouldn't go on that dating site just because. Why? Just you know, I'm just saying. Okay. Um, he cut off. From all friends, he cut her off from all friends and family, which is what they do, right? He would watch her so he would watch her phone, he would watch her iPad, and bad things would happen if she ever tried to contact anybody. Mm, that's what her mother stated. In addition to first degree murder, Ian is charged with destructing and concealing physical evidence, use of two way communication device to facilitate a felony. Two way communication device to facilitate a felony. What is that, y'all? Cremating a dead body 48 hours after death and failure to report a death to a medical examiner. Two-way communication device. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Well, so anyway, here's the police report that I have on him. Okay. On or about September 30th. Well, this is, okay. This is the probable cause affidavit that shows background of the investigation. On or about September 30th of 2022 at approximately 7.20 a.m., Hendry County Sheriff's Office were notified that Banach's ex-wife, Katie Banach, was missing. Law enforcement research revealed that in September of 2022, the HCSO Sheriff's Office, the Hendry County Sheriff's Office, investigated a report filed by Katie that he had physically abused one of their, her minor children cannot receive an injunction for domestic violence against him on behalf of the minor child. Law enforcement learned that Katie dropped her two minor children shared in common with him off at a friend's resident at approximately 9 p.m. on September 29th on or about September 29th of 2022. Katie Binock told the friend that Binock said she could come over to retrieve some of her personal items from their residence. Katie then left their friend's residence. This was the last time she was seen alive. On or about September the 30th, law enforcement arrived at the premises to search for Katie Binock. Law enforcement found Katie Binock's vehicle parked in the driveway of the premises and observed her purse inside the vehicle. Well, he's not a very good criminal, is he? What is it with these lazy criminals? And y'all know y'all gonna get caught. You know you're gonna get caught. Okay. Law enforcement was not able to make contact with Banaka at the premises at this time and departed. Law enforcement then returned a short time later and discovered that her Katie's vehicle had been moved to a location on the street outside on the premises. Law enforcement applied for and received a search warrant authorized by the Honorable Judge James D. Sloan of the Civil Court of the 12th Judicial Circuit of Florida to enter the premises and search for Katie. On or about September 30th at approximately 1 p.m., law enforcement executed the search warrant at the premises and discovered evidence that a homicide had occurred there. So apparently, so he hadn't even tried to cover up the crime scene inside the house at all either. Law enforcement then applied for and received a second search warrant to search for evidence relating to the possible homicide of Katie. The same day at approximately 4.15 p.m., law enforcement returned to the premises to execute the second search warrant. Detectives searched her vehicle, which was parked in the garage of the premises. Oh, now it's been parked in the garage. And applied luminol to the interior of the vehicle's trunk. Luminol is a chemical that reacts to the presence of, bl of blood by, by glowing blue. Y'all know this. I hate that I have to read all that. Okay. The interior of Banach's vehicle trunk glowed blue after law enforcement applied the luminol. When law enforcement searched a hallway located between the garage doorway and the foyer of the premises, they observed signs of a physical struggle. There was damage to the wall and exposed, and exposed screws in the wall where an object appeared to previously been mounted. Law enforcement discovered a broken wall-mounted mirror inside an office adjacent to the damaged wall. Law enforcement treated the area with luminol again, with, which again glowed blue, showing the presence of blood in the previously described hallway. The luminol also reacted on one of the hallway adjacent to the office door and on the office door frame. Law enforcement discovered a large surface area on three different walls of the premises which glowed blue when treated with luminol. 
Inside of the office, law enforcement found a safe which contained Katie's wedding band and engagement ring. Law enforcement learned that Katie was wearing the wedding band and engagement ring when she departed her friend's house on or about September 29th to meet with Ian at his premises or at that premises. I'm, I'm assuming that the premises that she was going back to was their home together. I mean, you know, got to be right. Also located inside the safe was an AR-15 rifle, upper receiver, and 13 silencers of various configurations, including five solvent trap si type silencers, two oil filter type silencers, and six end cap type silencers. Law enforcement also found two Glock Model 2 27.40 caliber pistols inside the premises. One pistol was located in the office on a bookshelf in a plastic bag. A second pistol with a threaded barrel capable of accepting one of the solvent trap type silencers was removed from his person when he was arrested by the sheriff's office. Law enforcement found three rifles and a shotgun in the attic access above the garage. Two of these rifles were readily able to accept both an oil filter type and solvent trap type silencers. Additionally, law enforcement found two oil filter suppressors adapters using to used to fit the oil filter type silencer on the barrel of the rifle for us that don't look, know anything about guns basically what they're saying is that all these silencers that he had they fit pretty much all his guns in a nutshell not all of them just some of them he says the officer says based on my training and experience in the investigation to date the solvent trap silencers found at the premises function as silencers by attaching them to the distal end of a firearm barrel law enforcement determined that the solvent type Trap type silencers found at the premises should be installed on the AR-15 upper receiver and other rifles rifles found at the premises. Um, why is this a big deal? Well, I'm not a like I don't. I would say that I don't have a lot of experience with guns, but I do know a lot of people that own guns, and I will say that most of them, at least in the South, most of them don't have silencers, do they? Like, aren't silencers only for? Like, I know where, like, where we live, if you go out further into the country, people don't care. You hear shotguns all the time. People out there acting crazy, not acting crazy, but, you know, you pull, they pull out a shotgun in the country. That's just what they do, right? You can't do that in the city. And they were in Fort Myers, so maybe that's why you had them. Um, Fort Myers is a heavy tourist area in Florida, so this could be why. I think that's where they were. I'm not going to go over that. Oh, here's the, oh, 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 we got pictures, y'all. All right, let's look at these pictures. All right, let's look at the pictures. So these are the silencers. This is what they look like. That doesn't mean squat to me. On about October 1st, law enforcement interviewed Banach. Law enforcement advised Banach of his Miranda rights, and Banach agreed to waive them and speak with the law enforcement officers. Banach stated that on September 29th, she contacted him and said she needed gasoline for her vehicle. Banach stated that Katie arrived at his resident later that evening, and soon after she arrived, he and her got into an argument over another woman. Banach said he went to sleep because he did not want to argue, and when he woke up, she was gone. He stated he moved Katie Banach's vehicle off to his off of his property. He admitted to being angry that Katie filed for and received a domestic violence injunction against him. Law enforcement told Ian that blood was discovered inside the trunk of his vehicle. He said that there should not be blood in the vehicle, and if there was, it was due to groceries that he had transported. When asked about the blood found inside the premises, he stated that he did not believe the officers, and when asked about the broken mirror found in the office of the premises, he explained that he bumped into it while walking down the hall, and it caught it so only the frame was broken. During the interview, he said he did not have a body of Katie Banach and disputed that she was actually a missing person. Banach admitted to possessing the 13 silencers found at the premises, but disputed that they were actually silencers. On or about October 21st, law enforcement searched the property grounds surrounding the premises. Law enforcement discovered the fragment of human man with an intact tooth in a fresh burn pile and discovered a blue 50-gallon barrel near the burn pile, which reeked of decaying. Inside the blue 50-gallon barrel, law enforcement discovered an additional human Law enforcement discovered other suspected human bones in the area surrounding the burn pile. So they contacted the ATF Firearms and the Ammunition Technology Division, who then analyzed the photographs of the 13 silencers found at the premises and concluded that they were silencers within the meaning of National Firearms Act and under federal law, and therefore were subject to regulation and provisions. 
ATF agents performed a records check and determined that he had not registered the silencers under the National Firearms Act and not received a tax stamp as required by law. Additionally, ATF agents searched the National Firearms Registration and Transfer Record, and no record was found that the silencers found at the premises were registered to Ian. Additionally, Bannock did not have a fire federal firearms license. Oh, he in trouble now. Oh, oh, that's a, whoa, what is that? Upper receiver with solvent. So that's a big, that's a bad, big, bad gun. I don't know anything about guns, but that's a big, bad gun. Okay. So you're a fine inspected. So we inspected the firearms and silencers discovered at the premises and determined that the silencers could readily be attached to multiple firearms. Now, see, the people I know, y'all, around here, they don't have these kinds of guns. We've got shotguns for hunting and stuff. I don't understand why people will want these types of guns. I'm not going to get into that debate, though. We're not going to talk about politics on my channel, so. Blech. <laughs> Based on the foregoing, this there is probable cause to believe that Ian Bannock has committed the crime of possessing a firearm which is not registered to him in the National Firearms Registration and Transfer Record in violation with or of 26 UCS blah, 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 blah. Okay. That's one part of it, but I wonder when this is going to go to trial. This was a quick crime take, and I do appreciate you guys listening in. I'll see what I can find on this case moving forward, if we're going to go to trial, if when we're going to go to trial, and I'll post that update on my channel. You guys have a blessed day, and thank you for watching. Bye, y'all.